present Arthur Lowe, John LaMessurer, and Clive Dunn in Dad's Honor. <laughs> the day the balloon went up, featuring John Lorre, Arnold Ridley, and Ian Lavender, with this week's guests, Bill Pertwee, Frank Williams, Edward Sinclair, and Michael Knowles. Here is the news, and this is John Snag reading it. The war continues, and Europe writhes in agony under the grinding heel of the Nazi jackboot. Hitler looks hungrily across the channel, but the brave men of Britain's home guard are grimly determined that the shadow of the swastika shall never darken this green and pleasant land. At the church hall in Warmington-on-Sea, it is the start of another day's parade. Sir, Wilson? Sir? Why aren't the men falling in? Well, uh, probably because I haven't told them to, sir. <laughs> Would you mind telling them now? Yes, of course, sir. Right, right. right uh, fall in, you chaps, will you? All right, finish again. All right, squad. Squad, return, shut. <laughs> Sorry about that. Yes, it wasn't awfully good, Jones, was it? <laughs> All right, stand out, ease. <laughs> that was me again. Yes, Jones, do try to do it when the others do it. I'm oh, sorry, Sergeant. I wasn't far out, was I? No, you weren't. <laughs> it makes the whole squad look so slovenly. Sorry, Sergeant. Well, perhaps if I shout a bit louder, sir, it might make Jones feel more at home. Oh, get on with it, Wilson. All right, sir. Squad. Squad! Attend, shut! Oh, it's remarkable, don't you think, sir? Yeah. The only slight criticism I have is that the rest of the squad is at attention while Jones is standing at ease. <laughs> well, heaven's so ears, Jones. Jones, do you think you could put your legs together? What do you mean, put your legs together? <laughs> supposed to be a sergeant, not headmistress at a girls' school. <laughs> girls, Jones, hand! You see? It's the way to do it. Yes, it's awfully good, sir. The only slight criticism I have is that the rest of the men now seem to be standing at ease. <laughs> Stand to attention, all of you. Very smart, Jones. Oh, thank you very much, sir. By the way, I got some mm. nice kidneys for Mrs. Mannering. <laughs> no talking on parade, Corporal. Bring them round to the office after inspection. <laughs> Pike? Sir? Why are you wearing that muffler on parade? I think I might be getting croup. <laughs> croup? Yes. And Mum said I had to wear my muffler just in case. Wilson. I thought only babies got croup. Yeah, well, he gets it too. He must be a late developer. <laughs> But well, don't let him come on parade like that again. G Godfrey. Uh, yes, sir. Don't wear your hat straight like that. It should be worn on the right side of the head. Look like George Formby. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, sir. Would you mind holding my stick while I, I adjust it? Uh, thank you. Just a minute. You can't bring a walking stick on parade. Well, you see, I get a little twinge of gout in my left foot when there's a damp spell. That's why I've got a slipper on that foot. A slip. <laughs> you can't come on parade like that. Look, fall out, everybody. Now pay attention, all of you. Quite clear to me that this platoon is getting very lax in the matter of personal appearance and discipline. Now, this is borne out by a signal I received this morning from HQ. It appears that the CO came through here yesterday and didn't receive a single salute. Furthermore, a certain Lance Corporal even had his hands in his pockets, which he did not remove. Permission to confess, sir. <laughs> yes, Jones. I was that certain Lance Corporal. Well, I'm not surprised, Jones. You're the only Lance Corporal we've got. <laughs> but why you, Jones? I've always found you most punctilious about saluting. Well, it was a case of forgetfulness, sir. Forgetfully? Surely you haven't forgotten what an officer looks like. No, sir, I've forgotten me braces. <laughs> I thought if I took my hands out of my pockets to salute him, it would not be seemly. Uh, <coughs> I see. Mm. Well, we're going to spend the next five minutes saluting. You give the order, Jones, and remember, the hand goes the longest way up and the shortest way down. So, it's longest way up, one, shortest way down, two. Palm of the hand faces front, forefinger in line with the right eyebrow, like so. Everyone see me clearly? Oh, yes, sir. Yes. Right, carry on, Corporal. Yes, sir. Squad up! Longest way up. One. One. Squad up! Shortest way down. Two. Mr. Battering? Yes, pick up. Squad up! Longest, Longest way up. One. One. Oh, how very nice of you all to salute me. <laughs> <laughs> you don't really have to, you know, but uh, bless you. Squad up! Shortest way down. Two. 
Can I help you, Vicar? Well, that's rather taken the wind out of my sails. I I came here to be very cross with you, Mr. Mannering. Someone has written a very rude word on the back of my spare harmonium. (laughs) I don't see how that concerns my platoon. Well, it's in the room at the top of the church tower. Your men sleep in there on fire watch. They wouldn't do a thing like that. Well, they have. Come up and see for yourself. Oh, very well. Wilson, you come with me. Hi, sir. Jones, carry on with the saluting. Right, sir. Squad! Hup! Long his way up. One! Squad! Hup! Short his way down. Two! Squad! Hup! Long his way up. One! Squad! Hup! Short his way down. Two! Hurry up, Wilson. Ah, here we are. Now, do you see that on the back of the harmonium? What have you got to say to that? Oh, dear. <laughs> well, my men don't do that sort of thing, and I'm going to prove it. Well, sir. My goodness, sir. Oh, dear, dear. Oh, it's a jolly long way up, isn't it? Yes. Go down and get Jones's section up here. <laughs> All the way down again? Yes. Well, uh, At can, the double. Can I go home then, sir? No, I want you back up here as a witness. And I'll go and get the men, sir. Now, Becker, where is the implement? I beg your pardon. The implement the culprit used. Oh, uh, here it is. A wax crayon. And what's more, you can't rub it off. Vicar, I want to dispose of this matter once and for all. Really, Mannering, I don't see the point of having the whole platoon pounded here with their great big ugly boots. I'm not having a slur like this hanging over my troops. Every one of my men is going to write that word that's been crammed on the harmonium. And you can compare the handwriting. Mr. Mannering, I am here to take care of the spiritual needs of my parish, not to play Inspector Hordley Investigates. <laughs> ah, Jones. Oh, Sergeant is lagging behind breathless, sir. <laughs> Everyone here? All except Mr. Godfrey, so he's asked to be excused for a moment. Oh. <laughs> right, now, look, Jones. You see this writing? Where, sir? On the harmonium. He can't even see the harmonium. <laughs> Don't you start your sarcasms, Jock. You see that word, Jones? Have you done that? Do you mean recently, sir? <laughs> Did you write that word on the harbour? <laughs> Mr. Manning, I'm shocked. I'm shocked you should think me capable of such improper conduct. It's nothing personal, Jones. I want you to take this crayon and copy those letters underneath. What, now, sir? Now. In public? Yes, in public. <laughs> but with his reverence looking on... Don't get on with it. <laughs> I can't do it, sir. It's an order, Jones. Very well, sir. But I'd like you to know I'd do it under Doris. Duress, <laughs> <laughs> you fool. All right, Fraser. Just get on with it, Jones. Very well, sir. There we are. Ah, well, that clears Jones. And I want you to know, Vicar, that I did not enjoy that. Neither did I. <laughs> Jones' section's here now, sir. <coughs> well, I know that, Wilson. Go back and get the rest of the platoon up here. <laughs> what? Go all the way down again? That's what I said. Oh, very well, sir. Right, see you next, Pike. Oh, here. Have you noticed how the wind moans round these old towers? Permission to speak, sir. Not now, Joe. Go on, Pike. Write the word. What's it mean, Mr. Manry? <laughs> Never mind that now, Pike. Has it occurred to you that when you've finished, somebody has got to remove all this crayon from the harmonium? Help! Mr. Interrupter? Not now, Jones. You're next, Fraser. I am refusing to obey. Did I hear you right, Fraser? You can't touch pitch without being defiled. Oh. Sir, permission to report the verger is outside. Oh, well, then tell him to come in. He's outside the window. <laughs> I beg your pardon? He's outside the window and he's going up and down and side to side and he looks a bit agitated. <laughs> well, there's no need for him to be that impatient. Oh, my sainted aunt, he, he's dangling outside. Quick, open the window. <laughs> Help me, Your Reverence. What's he doing out there? Well, I told him to clean the windows, but I didn't expect him to go that far. Good Lord. Look up there. Good. It's a barrage balloon. He's caught in the netting of a barrage balloon. <laughs> Look, one of the ropes is caught around the weathercock. We can't get at him from here. We have to go down. I've come back, sir. The, the whole platoon's queuing up. <laughs> They're ready for you, sir. Quick, Wilson. Back down into the yard. <laughs> 
Not again, for heaven's sake. Jones, follow me with the rest of the platoon. Right, oh, no, sir. Now, don't go away, Burger. You just stay where you are. Uh, Mr. Yeatman, if you could manage to hold on a little longer, I'll summon assistance. I am holding on. <laughs> oh, Mr. Manning, I, I'm so glad you're here, sir. Uh, something rather odd has happened to the verger. Yes, we know, Godfrey. <laughs> I just come out of the, you know, uh, uh, across the yard. <laughs> and I heard a voice from above. Yes, very distressing for you, Mr. Godfrey. I thought at first it was a visit from an angel on high. <laughs> yes, it would, naturally. He cried unto me. Help! I'm caught in this ruddy netting! <laughs> Look, there's the main cable. Hanging across the other side of the yard. Come on! Voices from above can be very distressing, Mr. Godfrey. I remember once when I was in the city... Jones! Godfrey! No time for chit-chat. Come and grab this cable. Come on, all of you. Right, sir. Come on, everybody. Don't panic! Don't panic! Somebody a bit of panic. This is killing me. <laughs> Hold on, Virgil. Help is at hand. Heave, man. <laughs> no, it's no good, sir. One of the guide ropes is still stuck round the weathercock on the steeple. So it is. Wilson? Yes, sir? You wanted me? Yes, you and Pike run to the top of the tower and scramble up the steeple. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, there's no time for all that palaver. One good heave and should be able to dislodge it. Come on, now. Right. Heave! That's it. The rope's clear of the tower now. And so is the weather. Look out, everybody! Look out! Oh, well. I never cared for that weathercock anywhere. <laughs> right. Heave on the cable and bring the verger down. One, two, three, heave! heave. One, two, three, heave! heave. Easy, Daddy, now. Get ready to grab him. Come on. Oh, That's oh, it. Grab him. Oh, oh, there we are. There we are. All right, Virgin. Oh, yes, thank you. Well, hang on half oh. to the cable, the rest of you. Right, sir. Oh. The wind's tugging the balloon. How did it happen, oh. Mr. Yateman? Well, I saw this netting stuff wrapped round a lamppost, and I went to untie it, and there was a sudden gust of wind. And the next thing I knew... I was taking a loft. There you are. You see, you shouldn't touch things what don't concern you. You always was a nosy parker. No, 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 no. <laughs> what are we going to do now, sir? Hang on for a moment while we think. We can't hang on here for the rest of our blooming life. If, if we brought be... it down a little further, we could grab all those ropes dangling from the balloon itself. Good idea, Wilson. Right, men. Heave away when I tell you. Right. One, two, three. Heave! One, two, three. Heave! Heave! Bit more. That's it. Right, grab one of the ropes, Pike. Go on, Wilson Fraser. Get hold of another one. Well done, Godfrey. I think I'm going to hold on to one of these ropes, sir. Thank you, Jones. Here. <laughs> Who's in charge here? What do you want, Hodges? Uh, just exactly what sort of game do you think you're playing? Dancing around the maypole? One of these days, I'm going to have you suspended. Don't stand there muttering threats. Get that thing shifted. You should never have been allowed to bring it here in the first place. This one is a runaway barrage balloon, and we've been struggling to bring it under control to prevent further damage. Then why don't you get on the phone to the RAF instead of hanging on there like Winnie the Pooh? <laughs> that is precisely what I aim to do. Well, get on with it then. Right, come on, Wilson. Look out! Look out! It's taking Look off! It's taking off! Picker. Grab hold of one of those ropes! Oh, very well. You too, Virgil. Right, 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 everybody hold steady. Right, sir. We'll phone for help. Before you go, do you think I could absent myself for a few moments? Certainly. <laughs> Come on, Wilson. Hold on, I'm coming with you. I want to make sure you phone properly. Come along, Mr. Yeatman. You're supposed to be holding a rope. Oh, no, you reverend, so I'm not going up for a second time. Don't worry. Lightning never strikes in the same place twice. It does in our family. I was one of twins. <laughs> oh, come along. Why did we hold this one together? Oh, if you insist, your reverence. Hello? 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 RAF operations. Squadron leader Horsefall here. <laughs> ah, there's a man ring here. Want me to see home guard. I have to report that my men and I have captured one of your balloons. Oh, wizard Frank. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be the joker that's adrift from East Hector. You'd better give me a few details. Very good, sir. But could I have the address? Yes, it's St. Aldham's Church Hall, Warmington on Sea. Good. Is the balloon attached to anything? Not now. <laughs> it was wrapped round the verger. No, see, <laughs> there's no time for all this rubbish. Give me that phone. Hello, squadron leader. Now look, is a balloon dangerous? Well, not unless it catches fire. Uh, not unless it catches fire. Not unless it catches fire. <laughs> Do you hear that man ring? It could catch fire. So don't let anyone smoke near it. And we'll try and get someone round to you before nightfall. <laughs> but, but that'll be ours. Now look, look here. It can't stop here, and that's final. Well. Perhaps 
Perhaps the ARP people could help you. Ah, yes, that's a good idea. Get in touch with the ARP people. Just a minute, I am the ARP people. <laughs> ah, but you're the chap to get in touch with them. We'll send help as soon as possible. Cheerio. Now, look here, Manring. You're in charge and it's your responsibility. That thing must be shifted and shifted sharp. So what are you going to do about it? Don't worry, Warden. I'm well capable of handling the situation. Follow me. Hold it steady, lad. Hold it steady. Right, man. Now listen to me. Got a few words to say to him. Surely, to goodness, is not going to make one of his speeches. <laughs> the RF is coming to help us. He is. He is, you know. But, naturally, they have a lot of other things keeping them busy at the moment. Hitler still poised across the water, and our lads can't relax their vigilance for a solitary second. Look here, I don't want to stand here and listen to you making a speech. Get that balloon shifted. <laughs> why, why don't we just walk it into the fields and tie it to a tree or something? That's the first sensible thing anyone said for the last half hour. Why didn't you think of that, Mannering? I was just about to suggest it. He <laughs> was to bring my van along so we could tie it to that. As an extra precaution against it being wafted away by an unfavourable wind. That's a good idea, Jones. I'll take your place and we'll walk it out to Pinner Fields. You go and get your bam. Right, sir. I shan't be long. Now, has everybody got hold of a rope? I've had that, sir. You too, Hodges. Yes. Good. Right. Balloon platoon to Pinner Fields by the left. <laughs> quick pass. Left. Right. Left. Right. Looks like a good place to tie the balloon whistle. Where, sir? See those cows? Oh, yes, but, uh... <coughs> yes. And won't they object if you try and tie anything to them? Oh, not to the cows. <laughs> There's a couple of fallen tree trunks near them. We could tie it off to one of those. Oh, yes, I see, yes. Here we are, man. Capital mooring point. Into the field. Left wheel. Left. Right. Left. Right. Left. Right. Return. Halt! Right. Pull down on the ropes, man. Mr. Manring, I parked the van on the roadway. Good man, Jones. Yes, sir. Right, sir. Uh, give me a hand to tie this cable. Sir. Ah. Oh. Yeah. That should do it. You think the trunk will hold it, sir? It doesn't look heavy enough. All right, Wilson, I know what I'm doing. I think for safety's sake, we'd better tie it to another tree trunk as well. Men, bring that other tree trunk over here. You can let go of the ropes now. <laughs> All right, come on, lad, jump to it. Up! There we are. Oh, oh, quick! Oh. Hang on to this cable with me, Jones. Oh. Balloon's taking off. Oh. oh, sir, I'm taking off. Don't panic! Don't panic! <laughs> Fraser, quick, grab the ropes. We're going up. We're going up. Come on, got Fraser. Fraser, Fraser, get hold of the ropes. Oh, but can't they reach them? Are they going too high? Eh? Come back, Mr. Manring. Come back, Mr. Jones. Hey. <laughs> Hang on, sir. Hang on. Hang on. I got. Oh dear, I told him that tree trunk wasn't heavy enough. Oh, well, at least I've got something to sit on. <laughs> a right mess you lot have made of that. Do you think we'll ever see them again? <laughs> well, don't just stand there gawping. You've got a van, haven't you? Follow them. What? Oh, yes. Well, come on, lads, into the van. Right. Uh, hang on, Mr. Manning, we're coming. And uh, Fraser, you'd better drive. Oh, well, sir, sir. Right, come on, in the van, lads. Come on, lads. Come on, get, come on, get yourselves in. Hang on. Oh, oh Mr. Manning, isn't this an unusual experience? Sit still, Jones. Don't shake us off the tree trunk. Yes, sir. Of course, sir. Oh, doesn't everything look small down there? Oh, look. They're getting into my van. Oh, good. It's, someone's driving it off. That's a liberty, that is. Hey! Down there, what do you think you're doing? Jones, do be quiet. They can't hear you. Anyway, how could you possibly drive the van? You're up here. Oh, so I am. Oh, I am, I am. Can you see them, Mr. Wilson? They seem to be getting higher and higher. The bleed will go up every time if you count as hot air. Aye, well, my ring has never been short of that. <laughs> Uncle Arthur. Yes, Frank. What if the RAF see them and think it's a German secret weapon? Will they shoot it down? Oh, don't be silly, Frank. Unidentified object on the screen in C-sector. Vector 140, sir. Great Scots, here there is. How did that get in there, undetected? Must have sneaked in at hedgerow level. Hello? Biggin Hill Control here. Unidentified object, Vector 140. 
Tennis court and intercept and identify. Tennis court and scramble. Tennis court and scramble. Vector 140. Mr. Manrin, do you think we're destined to drift about the skies forever like lost souls in torment? <laughs> now, do stop rambling, Jones. Sound like Ryder Haggard. <laughs> oh, what's happening? What's happening? Hold tight. The wind's changing. Hold oh. tight. Ooh. Turn the van round, Fraser. The wind's changing. Right here, sir. Hey, what's happening? I've done that round. The wind has changed, man. Oh, this is ridiculous. We can't go back with a force like this all day. I do wish you wouldn't shut him out here, Hodges. It's unnerving. Oh, Mr. Wilson, why don't we shoot holes in the balloon and let the gas out? That'll bring the war. Oh, dear, do you think that's wise? Larry, you've got to do something, haven't you? All right, but we have to aim carefully. Well, even your lot couldn't miss a barrage yes, balloon. <laughs> Can they miss Captain Mannering and Corporal Jones? Can I shoot at the balloon, Uncle Arthur? <laughs> please, please let me shoot the balloon. Please, please, Uncle Arthur, let me shoot. All right, Frank, all right, but be very careful. Now keep the van steady, Fraser. Right, sir. Now take very careful aim, Frank. Right. Here goes. <laughs> shooting at us. <laughs> oh, shooting at us, Mr. Mannering. Heaven's sake, you keep still. Shooting at the balloon, not us. Permission to pray, sir. <laughs> How was that, Mr. Fraser? <laughs> Must be all right, son. George is still kicking. Frank. <laughs> you better try another two rounds. Right. You too, Godfrey. Oh, I'd rather not, if you don't mind. No. No, you just fix your bit in case they come down low. <laughs> right, Mike. Fire. I think I've winged it. <laughs> well, you must have had your eyes closed. I think they've hit the balloon this time. Some of the gas escapes should help us to lose height. Now I'm making a funny noise. It's not the balloon, Jones. It's a plane. I hope it's one of ours. Well, if it's not, we'll find out soon enough. Hello, short Jack. Ted is leader calling. We've spotted that mysterious object. It's a ruddy balloon. Hold on. There's something dangling from it. It's a little round, fat thing. <laughs> There's something else. A little thin thing. <laughs> I'm going in for a closer look. Roger and out. Mr. Madden, it's coming straight for us. Courage, Jones, courage. Oh. All right, Jones, it was one of ours. Oh, I thought that was my last moment it comes, sir. I think we're getting lower, Jones. I think you're right, we are. It must be about treetop height now. Oh, look, sir. There's Mrs. French's farm. How do you know? It's her haystack, sir. Look, she's got the biggest haystacks in the county. <laughs> she's very proud of them, she is. Oh, yes. Yes, I see what you mean. <laughs> They're looming right ahead of us. And look, 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 Uncle Arthur, they're getting much lower. Yes, and they're drifting straight over the Prince's farm. Oh, dear, they're going straight for those haystacks. Whoa! Whoa! Are you all right, Jonas? Oh, oh, I think so, sir. Mrs. Prentice is going to be very pleased about her ace, Jack. <laughs> oh, never mind then. Where's the van? Is it still following us? I think so, Captain Manning. <laughs> That's put me off cornflakes for the rest of my life. <laughs> Yes, they're, they're drifting away across the fields now. No, we'll never catch them. Well, how can we get to them? Well, if I might suggest, you, you take the first turning on the right. It's a shortcut. You know, such a pretty walk in the summer. <laughs> well, get moving, man. We're not on a ruddy picnic. Right, here we go. Can you see them, Frank? Um, uh, yes, yes, there they are. They're bobbing about just below that line of trees. Good heavens. That's the real will I Oh, dear. Uh, I do hope they won't meet the 420 from East Swan. <laughs> meet it? I should think they caught it right round the funnel on their way to Little Hampton. <laughs> I do think that's in awfully bad taste, Mr. Hodges. <laughs> Can't be going any faster, Fraser. What, and Jones's van? He must be joking. I'm doing over 20 miles an hour now. Eh? <laughs> hey, look. Look, there's the balloon ahead. It's caught on the railway bridge. Oh, Oh, what are we going to do, Mr. Manrin? Here we are, dangling over the line, and the train's coming. Now, steady, Jones. Don't lose your nerve. 
Oh, oh, the train's coming, sir. The train's coming. Oh. Just keep calm, Jones. As soon as the van gets here, they'll hoist us up. Yes, but who'll get here first, them or the train? Don't do me quiet, Jones. Look out, sir. Here it comes. Open your legs. Open your legs. Hey, all right, Jones. Hold on a minute, sir. I'll have a look. <laughs> Madeline, you still there? Hey, that's you, Wilson. <laughs> of course we are. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're up here on the bridge. There's so much smoke about. Can't see you. You two all right? Here, yes, thank you. Sook nearly choked us. Yeah, well, hold on then, and we'll hoist you both up. Hold on. Oh. All right, man. One, two, three. Heave! 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 Ah, there we are. Ah, <coughs> thank you, man. Oh, thank you. It's good to be back on firmer terror. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. <laughs> you should see yourselves. You look just like Kentucky minstrels. <laughs> Very amusing. <laughs> just the sort of cheap remark I should expect from a greengrocer. <laughs> Right, men. Hang on to those ropes. We don't want it to take off again. <laughs> oh, hello there, chaps. I'm squadron leader Horsefall. Jolly good show, what? Platoon, there is an officer and a gentleman present. Platoon, hop! Long this way up. One. One. Look out, don't let go of the ropes. Oh, no. <laughs> God, blimey, it's gone up again. <laughs> you ruddy hooligan. Don't shut up, Hodges. Quick, men, follow that ball. <laughs> That episode of Dad's Army, based on the original television series by Jimmy Perry and David Croft. You heard Arthur Lowe as Captain Mannering, John Le Measure as Sergeant Wilson, Clive Dunn, Corporal Jones, John Laurie, Private Fraser, Arnold Ridley, Private Godfrey, Ian Lavender, the Private Pike, Bill Pertwee, ARP Warden, Frank Williams, the Vicar, Edward Sinclair, the Verger, and Michael Knowles as Squadron Leader Horsefall. The Day the Balloon Went Up was adapted for radio by Michael Knowles and Harold Snowd and produced by John Dias. 